Before we go any further, let's take just a few minutes to talk about the notation that we're going to use for directions and planes in crystals. Here is an example that shows three different lattice planes within a cubic crystal and one direction. Let's talk first about directions. So a direction is specified by a vector. And the notation of that vector is going to be the integers u, v, and w inside square brackets. And how we determine the values of u, v, and w is we take the vector and we start it at the origin. And then we just have to find uh, any point that the vector goes through. And then by convention, we're going to convert that into typically the smallest set of integers. So if we look at the vector that's shown on the right-hand image here, we can see that uh, you know, the vector is drawn, starts at the origin. And you can see that it intersects the unit cell here at the opposite corner. So that would be one lattice vector in the A direction, one lattice vector in the B direction, and one lattice vector in the C direction. If we were to add those three lattice vectors up, we would get the end point of this vector. So we call this the 1, 1, 1 direction. Now, of course, if you think about that line, you would realize that that line also goes through half, half, half. That line also goes through 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3. So any of those all refer to the same direction. And by convention, we're typically going to use integers for u, v, and w. And those integers are going to be the smallest set that we can. So we could call that the 2, 2, 2 direction. But instead, we're going to call it the 1, 1, 1 direction. So here's another direction in a crystal. Uh, this is an orthorhombic crystal. What I'd like you to do is to look at this and tell me what is the notation, the UVW notation of this vector. OK, so the first step in solving this problem is just to figure out what are the coordinates of the vector. So we see that the tail of it is starting at the origin, so that's good. If it's not starting at the origin, we want to translate it back to the origin. And then we just need to find the coordinates of the head of the vector. And so hopefully you can see that the head of the vector, you know, it doesn't have a component in the A direction. Uh, but if we were to go one unit cell vector in B and one half unit cell vector in C, well, that would be uh, the vector that's drawn here. So if we were to call that vector R, we could say that it's equal to 1 times the lattice vector B plus 1 half times the lattice vector C. Now we want to convert these into integers. So to make that 1 half an integer, we just multiply by 2. We put it in square brackets. And this would be the 0, 2, 1 direction. We're actually going to spend quite a bit more time talking about lattice planes than we are directions. So the notation for lattice planes is similar. When we speak about lattice planes, what we are usually talking about would be a set of parallel planes. So in a, in a crystal which is infinite, we have an infinite number of planes that are all parallel to each other. And there's a certain spacing between those planes. OK, and the notation that we use to talk about this is called Miller indices. And here we're going to put into parentheses the values HKL. Now, how do we determine the HKL? Well, what we want to do is to look at the intercept of the plane that is closest to the plane that goes through the origin. All right, The plane that goes through the origin is going to intercept the lattice vectors at 0, 0, 0, because that is the origin. So that plane we can't use to figure out the HKL. But we want to look at the plane that's next to it. All right, And so in this image, we're just looking at the plane that is next to the one that goes through the origin. On the next slide, we'll see a whole bunch of planes. And so if we look at the example over here on the far left, we can see that this lattice plane, shown in gray, intersects the C lattice vector at one unit of the C lattice vector. Okay, So the fra its fractional coordinate would be 1 in the C direction. 
uh, it does not intersect the A lattice vector or the B lattice vector. It's parallel to them. So no matter how far we extend out that plane, it's never going to intercept the A and B lattice vectors. So those intercepts, we would say, are infinity. Now the HKL values, the Miller indices, we get by then taking one over the intercept. If the intercept of A and B is infinity, one over infinity is zero. And then the intercept with the c-axis is one, and so the L value would be one. So this is the zero, zero, one plane. You can see here in the image next to it that it's very similar, but here we are intercepting the B lattice vector at one unit cell. Okay, So its fractional coordinate is one in the B direction. So this is the zero, one, zero plane. And then uh, here in the third image, we see a lattice plane that is intercepting all three lattice vectors, A, B, and C, at one lattice vector. Okay, so the intercepts here are 1, 1, 1, and that means the Miller indices of this plane are also 1, 1, 1. Now that we've seen these examples of a single lattice plane, let's take a, a more realistic view, I suppose, where we see, you know, many lattice planes. So here are at least two examples where we show multiple equivalent parallel lattice planes. So if we were to look at the example over on the far left, which we call the 104 planes, let's see how we can figure that out. The very bottom most plane, right, that is not any good to us because that is the plane that goes through the origin. We can't use that to determine the intercepts. But if we take the plane right above it, we can see that it intercepts the A lattice vector right here at a fractional coordinate of 1, while the B lattice vector is actually parallel to all of these planes. And so there is no intercept with the B axis. We might say its intercept is infinity. And then the C axis, it intercepts at one quarter of the way up to an entire unit cell. So its fractional coordinate where it intercepts the C axis is one quarter. So the intercepts are one, infinity, and one quarter. One, the inverse of those would be one, zero, four. So these set of lattice planes are the 104 lattice planes. If we look at the middle image, uh, once again, we want to, you know, here's our origin. So this plane right here is not the one that is going to be useful for us. We want to pick one of the neighboring lattice planes. I'm going to pick this neighboring lattice plane. And if I do so, I can see the intercept with A is at one. The intercept with B is at minus one quarter. And it's parallel to C, so there is no intercept with C, or we might say it's infinity. So this set of lattice planes is the 1 minus 4, 0 planes, or sometimes it would be the 1, 4 bar, 0. So the bar over the number means a negative. Now, you might be saying, well, why did you choose this plane? You might have chose this plane. It's also next to the one that goes through the origin, and I uh, absolutely could have. Now, had I chosen this plane, where does it intercept with the axes? Well, we don't see in this drawing where it intercepts with the a-axis, but we'd have to extend the a-axis back into the plane of the projection here, and it would intercept the a-axis at minus one. It would intercept the b-axis at a quarter, and it's still parallel to the c-axis. So if we'd used those, we would have gotten one bar for zero. So we can always multiply the indices by a negative number and get the exact same set of planes. And then we see the last example here uh, has an intercept with the a-axis at 1, with the b-axis at minus 1, and uh, parallel to the c-axis. So this is the 1, 1 bar 0 plane. Or we could call it, uh, not for the single plane, but for the set of equivalent lattice planes, we could call it the 1 bar 1, 0 plane set of planes. Okay, so here are a set of parallel lattice planes, and what I would like you to do is just take a second and figure out what are the Miller indices of these planes, and then come back and we'll go over the answer. What did you come up with? Well, 
we can see that the origin is shown here with this black dot, but we could pick any point, actually, any corner of the unit cell as, as an origin. But it's easiest maybe to think about it here being here. We see these are the directions of our unit cell vectors, A, B, and C. And so the plane that we want to focus on, I'm going to focus on this plane right here. Okay, That is the one that's next to the plane that goes through the origin. So what are its intercepts with the A, B, and C axes? Well, it intercepts the A axis at 1 half. It intercepts the B axis at minus 1 half. And it's parallel to the C axis, so there's no intercept with the C axis. We could say it's infinity. And if we take the inverse of those intercepts, we get 2 minus 2, 0. So this set of lattice planes I show here are the 2, 2 bar, 0 set of lattice planes. Now just one last note on the directions and planes, and that is in certain symmetries, different directions or planes might be symmetrically equivalent. As we'll talk about uh, in the next lecture, in a cubic crystal, the A, B, and C directions all have to be symmetrically equivalent. And so that means the 1, 0, 0, the 0, 1, 0, and the 0, 0, 1 directions, as well as the 1 bar 0, 0, 0, 1 bar 0, and 0, 0, 1 bar directions are all symmetrically equivalent. Yes, they're different directions, but the properties of the crystal the arrangement of atoms and everything has to be the same in those six directions. So we can refer to a set of symmetrically equivalent directions uh, by using uh, angled brackets around our numbers. And analogously, there are equivalent lattice planes. So in, in cubic, these uh, six lattice planes I've written here are all symmetrically equivalent. And so if we use curly brackets around the numbers, that signifies a set of symmetrically equivalent lattice planes.